coming up to 28 minutes past one Thursday afternoon. My guest this afternoon is perfect because today is on your feet day. My guest knows all about how to get you exercising and moving around because he is the clinical director of Active Step Foot and Ankle Clinic at Widely. Can I welcome to Express FM the lovely Emily Ball. Good afternoon, Emily. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me, Ian. Oh, it's my pleasure. First and foremost, how are you? Are you keeping safe and well? I am, thanks very much. I'm working from home at the moment, actually, which is uh, very topical um, with, you know, with what we're talking about today. Definitely. Now, obviously, over the last 14 months, everybody's been talking about this awful pandemic. It's affected absolutely everybody. However, for those that have still been working from, from not just from home, but also in offices, it's caused another problem called the sitting disease. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a real problem, isn't it? Because I think um, we've seen sort of the both ends of the spectrum, actually. We've seen people sitting more and then other people doing extremes of activity. But the sitting is definitely more of a worry because it can lead to so many more issues. It is because you probably don't realise that maybe if you're sitting from home now and you're working from home and you haven't got your normal office desk, you haven't got your normal office chair, maybe you're working possibly, you know, on the dining room table and, and you probably don't realise the problems it's causing. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest issues is, is poor posture, um, the fact that people are just sitting staring at their screens for so long. We get that Zoom fatigue, we're hearing that quite a lot. Um, and just generally sitting for those, those sort of long periods is causing a lot more aches and pains and immobility. The problem is you probably don't notice those aches and pains so much today. You might think, oh, I've got a little twinge, but you, you think, oh, it's fine. But it'll be the long-term effect, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen more and more people coming into clinic that are sort of getting swollen legs and ankles. Um, they're concerned about sort of pains in their feet and legs as well. Um, but also just silly things like, you know, they're walking more barefoot in the house too, um, which you know, they're losing that support they would normally get from their shoes. And that's causing extra stresses as well on their feet. Of course, that is something that you probably wouldn't think of. Because you think, oh, I'm working from home. I don't, I don't need to put my normal shoes on. I'm just. It's a beautiful day. The sun is out. The sky is blue. I'm just going to walk around with with nothing on my feet. Again, that's going to cause you an ongoing problem. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've got a mix of the sitting, but as I said, we've then got the extreme of people maybe starting up running activities because they weren't able to go to gyms, of course, during the pandemic. So you've got that mix of walking around all day with no support and then going out doing a 10k run. Um, and we're seeing lots of injuries and things as a result of that as well. Working from home has obviously got many, many benefits. I know one or two people who've got businesses oh, God, yeah. and obviously <laughs> it's working from home is fantastic. But one thing that has come to light is working from home means you're going to be working longer hours because instead of having maybe the commute to the office in the morning and the commute home at night, you're starting work earlier and you're finishing later. So you're actually spending far more time sat at your desk or the dining room table. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't have the stimulation from your work colleagues either. So you could find yourself sitting absolutely for, for so many more hours than you normally would if you were sort of going off the coffee machine or having a chat at the water cooler. So I think people don't realise they're actually spending, like you say, a lot longer at their desks and they're boosting a lot less. Now, I know you've got five points that you like to put over, obviously, to help people. Uh, the first point, I think this is fantastic, it's switching to a standing desk. Oh, I love this one. Yeah, I love this one. <laughs> I think the biggest benefit of that is, as I mentioned before, you know, if you're standing upright, then you're not stooping, you're not, you're not getting those musculoskeletal issues from poor posture. Uh, then also, if you're standing, you know, your, your circulation is going to be better too because um, when you're sitting, you get that pulling in your legs and, and that can cause the swelling and varicose veins and all the things that we don't want. But yes, yeah, standing, absolutely magic. If you can get a standing desk. I love number two. OK, wear a fitness watch or something that alerts you so you have to move around after a period of inactivity. Now, obviously, this is something when I was when I was looking at this earlier, I thought, Do you know what? I've just realised I come into the studio, I do a three hour show and I don't leave the studio very much over those three hours. And I, I just sit here for three hours. Suddenly you look at this and you think this is something that you really should do. 
Yeah, I mean, the fitness watches are brilliant these days. I mean, I personally got one of those polar watches, and if I'm sat still for more than half an hour, it gives me a little vibrate, and then I get up and move around. The key to this is if you get one, don't ignore it. <laughs> yes. That, 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 is, that is so important, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think sometimes you can get a little bit, you know, um, complacent and, and you just forget to move around still. So if you get one of those watches, just listen to it, and do, do what you're told and get up and move around. I mean, if you're in the middle of doing something, it's too easy to say, I'll do that in a minute. Oh, yeah, OK, I'll do that in a minute. Listen, j- just get up and move for a couple of minutes. It will be it will be perfect. I do like number three as well. Do 10 seated calf raises at your desk every couple of hours to reduce the uh, blood pooling and swollen legs and feet. Um, yeah. I, I thought about doing this just now because I was reading, obviously, this in the studio, and I thought, I'm not going to try it because we've got too many wires under the desk and I'd probably pull the wrong one out. <laughs> However... This is, again, I mean, that's not going to take you... It's so simple. It's, it's not going to take you too long to do 10 calf raises. But, again, this could be so important. Yeah, I mean, the, what a lot of people don't realise, and I won't get too technical here, but your calf muscles are the biggest driver of the blood back up the body. So if you sit for too long and you don't move, that's why you get this kind of pulling in your legs um, and sometimes the ankle swelling, etc. So, yeah, just moving your legs and doing the calf raises is going to just help with that circulation. I never knew that about calf muscles. I, that is, <laughs> I, I never knew that. Uh, I like number four, drink plenty of water to improve your blood circulation. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of benefits to drinking lots of water, but that is a key one, especially if you're sitting for a long time. People will say, OK, I drink a couple of cups of tea in the morning uh, and I might have a cup of tea in the afternoon. But it, it's the little drinks, isn't it? You don't need to have a whole cup. You could just have something there. Just just have a glass and, and, and just drink it throughout the course of the day. Yeah, I mean, I think a really healthy habit would be to fill up one of those two litre or, or one litre even flasks and just having it on your desk so that, you you know, you, you've got it there. I think half the problem is, is people don't set themselves up with fluids around them at the beginning of the day. So the environment is necessarily conducive to reminding you to have a sip of water. I mean, I... I always come into the studio in the afternoon and I, I always bring a, a bottle of water in with me. Unless, yeah, the, mani- unless the management of the, the Express FM are listening, then of course I don't because I keep it outside the studio. But I do bring a drink in because during the three hours, you, you, it, you do need to just have a drink now and again. It, it, it's just something that you need to do. Yeah, absolutely. And then I think what some people don't realise as well is that coffees and teas can actually cause dehydration. They're not uh, they're not necessarily that great for hydrating you. So, you know, water is the, uh, the best medicine there. Finally, I, this is one as well. I looked at this and I thought this is, this is something that everybody would say, I will do this, but they probably yeah. don't. <laughs> Leave your desk at lunchtime and go out for a brisk walk. Look, this is easier said than done in, you know, the, in the winter season. But we've got no excuse now. The sun is shining. You know, it's bright and breezy out there. I mean, everything is just looking so much better now, isn't it? Now that we're in it springtime. Is. So, yeah, just get up, get out. Even if it's just going around the block, just getting that fresh air is also good for your mental acuity. Um, but, you know, if it is a bit horrible um, outside, just walk up and down the stairs. You know, just move. Um, but, yeah, nothing, nothing beats a brisk walk at lunchtime. And, um, you know, we can go out and meet people now as well, which is good too. It is. I mean, that is, it's a wonderful. People think, oh, I've got to go out and I have to do... I have to go on a long walk. I mean, to be fair, anybody that's been listening to the show will know for the last couple of months I've been going out of a morning and I've been trying to do, I've been doing 10,000 steps to lose weight. You don't have to do that. Oh, wow. You, you can do just a quick 10-minute walk, right? Is, is, that yeah. will do so much good to your health, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if we think of it in terms of not fitness, but it's good for your mental health, it's good just to sort of get your heart rate up and get circulation going again. But it's just good to sort of loosen up your muscles and your joints as well so you don't stiffen up through the day. So, yeah, 10 minutes can make a big difference to all those things. Now, there's people listening and they're probably going, yeah, I, I've got a lot of these aches and pains and I've got a few of these problems from the sitting disease. I need some help. Is this something that you can help with, Emily? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, podiatrists are specialists in the lower leg, feet and ankles. 
So if you've got a problem in that area, that you know they're the ones that can, can really hone in on what the issue is and what structures are hurting and come up with a proper plan for you. Um, and I would say to anybody that's had a niggle for a long time and it's not gone away, just get some help because quite often it's the simple things that we can advise you um, that can just get you back on your feet and get you moving again. And um, it's just so important that you deal with them quickly if, if you can. Of course, because looking at those points that we've, we've just been discussing – People will think they're all, oh, yeah, of course, that makes sense. But they're things that people will probably just kind of look over and go, oh, yeah, yeah I, don't need, I don't need a standing desk. What, why do I need to move every couple of hours? It, these are the sort of things that you would just overlook, but they are so important during the day. Yeah, and I really hope just by talking about it today on the radio, we've educated people on just some of those risks. Um, for me, I think the biggest risk of sedentary working is some of the more sort of um, harmful diseases like diabetes, um, heart disease, you know, those sorts of things. Because, you know, when you look at the cumulative effect of, of sedentary working, you know, that's, that those are the real risks that can really um, sort of harm you in the long term. So if anybody's listening right now and they're thinking, I, we need help, I need help, how can they get in touch with you to have an appointment? Oh, there's so many ways now. I mean, you know, we've got we've got our website, uh, which is activestep.co.uk. Um, we have a Facebook page, which is Active Steps at an Ankle Clinic. You can phone the clinic. You know, um, there's always someone there sort of six days a week now. Um, we've got online chat. I mean, isn't it wonderful? The modern day, you, you oh, can get is. in touch with us probably um, on every social media platform. So, look, you know, wh whatever suits you, whatever's most convenient, look, we're here to help. And we're here to advise. And we've also got a free um, community on Facebook if you want to join. And that's the voice of foot and ankle pain. Um, so you just have to um, go onto Facebook and find that group. And that's a free community where we put loads of top tips on there to help people that have got foot and ankle pain. Fantastic. And just in case you miss that, it's activestep.co.uk. That's activestep.co.uk. UK. Now, obviously, anyone could get in touch with you and they're going to say, oh, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed. I, I, how do you how do you go along and you approach it? Listen, let's get this oh, out there yeah. straight away. There is nothing to be embarrassed about, and there is nothing that Emily and her colleagues have not been involved or seen before. Isn't that right? We've seen everything, but do you know what the biggest thing is? Is you know we, we go through these things as well. We're not we're not um, you know immune to some of the issues that people experience. Um, and a lot of us go into the dietary because we've had problems. Um, but I understand that people might feel embarrassed about certain things, but there's, there are so many solutions and, and we're here to improve people's quality of life at the end of the day. So don't be embarrassed. You know, we're here to help. We can, you know, we completely empathize because we've been through a lot of the things ourselves. Um, and most people in the world suffer foot problems. So just, you know, just get it sorted. Emily, listen, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I really appreciate oh, it. Pleasure. And obviously those, those five tips, fantastic. Would you come back on again maybe in a couple of weeks so we could have a catch-up and have another, have another little chat and maybe come up with a few more pointers? Oh, gosh, absolutely. I love talking about feet, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't many people that say that. Emily, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know what you've got planned for the rest of the day, but uh, I'd get up and have a little walk around now for a while. Yeah, I'm going to go out for a brisk walk, actually. It's lunchtime. <laughs> Perfect. Emily, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.